Hello, good morning, uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Priyanka, and uh, I am the manager USA with the uh, uh, M Square Media MSN. I would like to welcome you all for uh, the Agent E Summit with CCS and MSN Live. I'm sure this is going to be quite a fun-filled session because uh, uh, this time we have a surprise here. One of our uh, student is going to join us and talk about his journey. Uh, with Spokane and what is he doing right now. So it's, it's going to be quite entertaining today. So Community College of Spokane is a dynamic community college district serving over 30,000 students a year in Eastern Washington between our two accredited institutions, Spokane Community College and Spokane Falls Community College. Uh, during uh, the time of the session, uh, you would uh, uh, need, uh, maybe if you have any questions and queries, then you would need to put across your questions. And to do that, you can make use of the Q&A tab. In the bottom, you will find Q&A tab. I'm sure most of you uh, would know how to actually uh, access it. So you can just type in your question there. And if in case you face any concerns like technical issue, you're not able to hear us or or something like uh, uh, video concerns or something, you can type in your concern in the chat box and we'll be happy to address your issues. Uh, uh, we have our wonderful backend team who will be uh, assisting you for the same. So I will not take much of your time and I will introduce you to Mr. Na Allen, who is a wonderful uh, support uh, from Community Colleges of Spokane and always been great in order to support us, our partner agents like you to uh, uh, let them know about uh, CCS, what are the different updates about community colleges spoken and so on. So over to you, Trina. Thank you so much. Thank you, Priyanka. And uh, good morning, everyone. It's great to be here with you virtually again. Um, it's 11 p.m. here and <laughs> a little bit past my bedtime, but that's that's okay because this energizes me. This is one of my favorite things to do. Um, even though I can't see you, I know you're there and it's just really great to be able to connect. So um, today presenting with me because I know that everyone has Zoom fatigue these days, I decided to change up the presentation and invite a student uh, who has lived the student experience here in Spokane. Um, so Hello he's everyone. Hi, he's gonna tell his story um, and do more of the talking than me. So um, I hope you enjoy it. And obviously um, we are both here together. Um, this is one of my favorite people on the planet and he's been a fantastic student. He's now an alumni of CCS and is doing his studies at a university in Spokane. Um, please go ahead and introduce yourself, Abhilash. Hello everyone. Good morning, everybody back in India. Uh, my name is Abhilat Singh and I was once a student at SFCC and I graduated a couple of years ago and now I am an alumni to SFCC and CCS and I go to a university now. Yay. Yay. It's fun experience. <laughs> and my name is Trina Allen. I'm the manager of admissions and recruiting for community colleges of Spokane here in Spokane, Washington, in Washington State. And I'm in my 11th year of working for the college and working in international higher education. So today, together, we're going to walk you through the two plus two transfer model. So you, if, if you're familiar with community colleges, you have heard the two plus two transfer pathway. So we're really, we're going to bring life to that model today with Abhilash and talk about the experience from the student's perspective. And we're going to dive into um, some details about his program, information technology, his two-year degree that he pursued at SFCC. And then we're going to jump to his experiences with OPT and internships, as well as Finally, we'll talk about where he currently is studying and his plans for the future. So hopefully this will be um, a really informative session and interactive. Please, you know, ask your questions in the, in the chat and we'll hang out at the end for more questions as well. So just to remind everyone out there, 
Um, the two plus two transfer pathway is two years at a community college and then the final two years at a university to equal a four year bachelor degree. In this model, students earn the associate degree at the community college and they earn a bachelor degree at the university, taking away two degrees instead of one. And as you can see listed, there's a variety of benefits uh, that come with starting at a community college. Uh, scholarships, easy admissions, affordable tuition, high touch advising, interaction with professors, lots of lots of options um, that even you know, domestic students, I would say about 50% now of all students in the US are in a community college right now. Just, just, to just want to background. add, yes, yes, just want to add there while you say, like, you know, uh, transferring to a different university after two years of education. Um, a very common question comes in somebody's mind is, you know, we come to Spokane, we come to Washington, a state all the way from India in the Pacific Northwest. So when we go to any college, here in, at CCS, like if, if you go to Com Spokane Community College or you go to Spokane Falls Community College, your degrees are recognized all over USA. So even if you are studying in the West Coast, you can have your bachelor or you can go to university in the very East Coast and your credits, whatever study you do in the CCS, in the colleges here, they will for sure take those credits and they will transfer those credits and you can start again and just have to do two years to do your bachelor's there. Good point, yes. Um, with, the, with the transfer degree, especially each state has their own system. And so if a student transfers within a state like Abilash did, then it's a, a, a very, very strong transfer. Virtually 100% of, de of the degree will transfer. But you students transfer to New York, they transfer to California, all over, and 80% 80, 80 or more of the degree would transfer out of state. So it's, a, it's, yes. it's really a seamless process with advisors to assist. So we're first going to just jump <coughs> right in to um, what Abilash did study. And I, I've laid out here on the slide a couple of examples of his quarter session. So we don't do semester, we do quarters. And as you can see, his classes are already predetermined. So right off the bat, the guesswork and the stress of choosing your classes is taken away. It's laid out for you. All you have to do is pass the class, right? So uh, you'll see some, some talking points here. Abhilash, why don't you just take us through some of the, of the system that you went through? Of course, of uh, course. My my major in SFCC was information technology, associates in applied sciences, and um, like for the first day when you go for the orientation, your th your mind is like, what I'm gonna study, how it's gonna go through, what classes I'm gonna have, what professors I'm gonna take, what time the class is gonna start, and everything is already planned by the college. Like the first quarter, you go there. Basically, the first quarter is you know you are stepping into a new system of education into a new system where people will never, we have never seen something like this before. You know, everything is on the websites and everything is on computer and you have to navigate. And there are so many people to help you, like your professors, your fellow mates in the class and everybody. And for the first quarter, it's always the easiest classes. Like, you know, you're stepping into a new thing. So you want to go through smoothly into the program and trying to learn the things and how everything goes here, how the grading happens, how people mark you, how you have, how much attentive you have to be in your classes during the finals, during uh, your class, like generally every day. So everything is laid down for the only thing I think uh, uh, first thing we do during the orientation is uh, the placement testing. So like everybody, if you can see like in the first quarter, it says math 141 calculus. So during the uh, orientation, you go through a placement test of math. Uh, it's just general test, all the international students, all the American students that give that test and during, and that the results of those tests will determine what kind of math you can take. So if you like, uh, if you're good at it, uh, you can step into the right, exactly what math you want to do in your program. Like I was, uh, when I gave the test and the uh, the tutor and the professors, they just told me that you can do math for 141 calculus and you don't have to waste any time on any other kind of math. 
so that's what i did and even like with this setup i would say my professors helped me a lot the professors in the school they help you as advisors too so when you go to them you can tell them like ah uh, okay i have these two classes i want to take but uh, the timings of these two classes are not matching or i some somehow you don't like a professor you want to do it in the next quarter so they will they will make another plan for you and uh, the first class you see over here is 101 planning for information information technology students this particular class is made for the students american students international students all of them to plan your whole two years in the degree just a single class you meet twice a week or once a week with the hod of the department so head of the department will be there taking this class and all you have to do during this class is to manage and plan all your classes for the next two years that's it so if you have a class like this and you have a nice advisor nice professors help helping you with that so there will be no issues for the rest of your semester the rest of your quarters or rest of your for the two years and it it's pretty easy to lay down you know it's pretty pretty convenient you just go through one by one one quarter to another and uh, a lot of students in india they don't they don't go through the quarter system like in our school also there's early system in the universities and colleges of india there is semester system so when you come here first quarter three months okay you just you know you feel up you hype up about the quarter and the quarter ends right away and then the next quarter is right there <laughs> so it's for like i like quarter system because it gives you the acceleration whenever you need it you don't have to lay down for the whole six months and then you know after five months you're tired and then the next quarter next semester hits for this the acceleration is always there so you're always pumped and all you always know like there's something to do during those two years there's no time to relax and and the last thing i want to say about these things is this thing system is laid down without the summer quarters so somebody who wants to do a two years degree in less than two years like i did the two years degree in one and a half year so what you do is either you take like four classes in one quarter or you take five classes in one quarter uh, it depends on students how how he is doing during his quarters or you can always take the summer quarter you can take up to two classes or you know if you feel like it's a small short quarter it's like one and a half month but it's very fast and you have to be on your toes and you have to be on the top of the game if you doing the summer quarter and if you do those summer quarters and you know then you can do this degree in one and a half year like like i did i i think i did it in one and a half year during my my time there and anybody who is uh, have any questions about this plan of degree like any classes if you think you know 125 is 125 or is 234 you can just ask me any question in the end or right now and uh, yeah i can i can tell these things are so fresh right now, even right now i graduated i did this class like two and a half years ago but all the things that the professors have taught us all even the jokes of the professors are still in my mind of that class so i have no no hesitation of answering anything about it so just just keep from the question i love to hear that that you still feel fresh and that it's in your mind um oh, and, yes, and actually exactly. a lot of a lot of the technical programs like this are the same where they're pre-planned and the the schedules laid out for students and you know i guess the more important thing is you have to pass the class so that you can move to the next layer and you know that's a complication we don't need to talk about today but it does take the stress and the guesswork out of what you're supposed to do for the two years so um exactly. talk about a little bit about you know in the classroom Did you just have to sit and listen to the professor all day, um, or did you get a chance to interact in group sessions? And like, did you have hands-on training? Tell us a little bit about what you did in a in a day. Of course, of course, it's a you know like when you plan to go pursue your higher studies abroad, the only thing you know about is they give you a lot of theoretical knowledge. Like in schools of India, I I'm not talking about the, all the schools in India, but the schools I have gone through. and i have i know like they are all about in class giving the theoretical knowledge and not the practical knowledge about the computers we need to know but in these classes there's i can't see any class in my whole one and a half year and two years of degree where i didn't use a computer in the class 
and the professors the professors i i have so many stories i can tell you about the professors and interaction and how easy they make you ask questions um you know like my first week of class was like you know i'm where i am what i'm doing in this country in this school all the way you know up west but the professors i still remember mr pierce uh, he was my first professor in the school in my first very very first class in the school and he he was like you know he put his hand on my shoulders and he's like you don't have to call me sir or you don't have to call me anything just take my last my name and i'm just there i'm just like a, he was like older he i think i think he was like 60 years old and he he's been teaching like from 40 years and he's like i've seen so many international students so many students who are scared when they you know come out from the house and just just ask me anything like you ask your father i still remember the words he told me you know and in those one and a half year in the school every day i used to see him and all the other professors do they make your life so easy in the school in the class and it's not just it's not just about in the class or in the building even if you go to different parts of building in sfcc if you if they see you they'll just meet you like you know they are they are your friends or they know you from so long and all the professors especially you know who's been who been to different countries and they know about the diversity in the world they'll they'll just they they are so fascinated about asking you about anything you're doing in your culture and you represent it in sfcc um in my case i was like i'm still the only turban guy <laughs> yeah let me think yeah i was the first SFCC turban guy and the I, only turban guy yeah yes yes that's the see and i was like so you know i come from a state i come from a city where everybody's like me like you know we wear turbans it's normal and everybody's asking me in every corner like why you wear it why you have different colors are there any significant of this so you answer them you know they 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 feel so welcome if you answer them and tell them about your culture and those things help you make bonds with the professors and with the classmates you have and um, yeah i mean it's very it's not at all hard to talk it's not at all any any formality you don't have to do any formalities in front of the professors you just have to be yourself and be confident about what you want to do what you want to ask and they'll provide you with everything every day the lectures you know they put up the slides uh, and the next day you will have slides to yourself so you can you know it's not just one thing they show you when it's gone you can have them in your class and for rest of the class for rest of your life if you save them and the computer knowledge is always there there are so many so many developed labs in the school especially in the IT department in the building there are three three different labs with like more than 30 computers in every lab and everybody has so much knowledge about computers if you ask one professor something he will give you if you ask some ask a professor about something very certain he will explain you with so many different examples that in the end you end up knowing too many things about that thing so just just not about a certain thing you ask so with that area it it helps you know like in the different classes all the things come up and help you like i never had a, it it was never my first choice of study but anybody who is from india right now listening to me they know like you know it's a big thing an it guy or a computer scientist they are in a making of you know making of computer scientist so that was like you know pressured by my dad and my family to you know choose this major but after studying there for only 3 months like first quarter i i loved it and that's why i decided to pursue my higher like my after school education in witworth uh, in my university same thing i'm doing computer sciences there too so like everything starts uh, with one conversation with a professor in the class and the climate in this class are so, is so welcoming every day every day is like amazing and i love it and uh, right now going to university and comparing going to sfcc i really miss going to sfcc Uh, yeah, I love I'm it. I love it there. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of what I'm hearing from you is new. I mean, I'm learning as I as I listen to you talk now, and it's really interesting and and informative for me, and heartwarming as well to hear that you had such a good experience. Talk briefly before we move to the next slide. Talk a little bit about the capstone class that you were telling me about. That kind of that final class that was really the the culmination of everything you've learned. 
in this program? Yes, I I think there's uh, we don't see that class here, but uh, it it's it's called IS two twenty eight. It's the final class. You need to pass that class if you want to graduate. That class includes all the other all the knowledge from all the different classes. So uh, anybody who out there who knows about you know IT stuff, they know about MySQL, they know about Linux, they know about uh, programming in uh, different different environments like Visual Studio and everything. You do those classes one by one in your two years, and in the end of the semester, in the end of the quarter, last quarter when you have to graduate, you do this class I guess two twenty eight. That class includes all these classes, the knowledge from all these classes, and you have to put up a good show so that you can convince your professor that yes, you are ready to move to a different level that is bachelor's in the next two years. Mm-hmm. So uh, anybody who is out there who want to come here and study, they should learn in all the classes because the, the part you're learning there, you're going to use it in the end. Or like in the future when you play and get play somewhere or in a internship. So yeah, I guess two twenty eight. I love that class. Helps you gain a lot of stuff. Obviously, you passed it. Oh yeah, I think so. I did. Yeah, we yeah. did. So um, so he passed the class, which means he graduated. We know that. After the, after the 1.5 years, because he studied during the summer to get done faster. So then Abilash moved into his OPT. And I'm sure all of you out there listening understand and know about OPT, Optional Practical Training, which for the associate degree level at the community college is one year. At the university level, as you all know, for STEM, it's longer than one year, but for, for this particular level of education, Abilash took advantage of working for one full year in his field of study. And as you can see, he did not just do one, uh, one place he worked for. He had a number of um, opportunities and experiences. And then, and in this time also, he can reflect back and talk a little bit about his internship that he had during his program of study, there's a quarter that you get to do an internship built in to that curriculum. So these names, uh, CenturyLink, Qualcomm, Northern Quest, these names are really familiar to us here because they're US companies um, and more specific in the region. They're not going to be familiar to you, but let me tell you, these are very well known, very well known companies. So Abilash, tell us about your experience. Yes, OPT, uh, the one whole year to work in USA um, and get all the experience before you start your higher level of education. I would say all the students who come to you and ask about OPT, please and please encourage them and encourage their families, like anybody who comes with the student, that you should do OPT for one year. Because uh, a lot of parents in India, they think, uh, you know, you should keep doing your studies. Once you do your studies, then start working and you waste your, I think not doing it is wasting one year, one very precious year with where you can gain stuff and even earn money. Like as a side pocket money, it's a good, uh, for me, I, when I got my OPT approved by the um, law people, by the, you know, over here by the USCS, a day I got my card and I got started working and I, and I do like more than 30 resumes every day i used to like you know keep pushing it pushing it pushing it and uh, i got uh, too many interviews and uh, one thing central link is a company um i think right now is the second or third largest network of internet here in usa yeah uh, it's like geo in india it's like reliance in india it's like connect in india it's like you know one of the top three companies of internet who provides internet and other kind of services so i i I applied there, I got a call, I, I go through like three interviews and I got placed as an intern there, but a paid internship. And uh, it's like the lower level, you're in the bottom of the top food chain and uh, you go through so many, so many people are above you, but you go there and learn, that's it. And the experience is over there, you know, working with so many different kind of people with so many levels, it's so amazing to know things and apply all the things you learned during your AA degree in school and apply those things over there. And I think uh, there were too many 
a lot of people over there they were there but they didn't have any degrees you know like some people they they know stuff and they don't know don't have degrees but they are working there from so long you can teach them and they nobody is like you know don't teach me i know better than you no nobody is like that everybody wants to learn from the experiences even a kid has everybody wants to learn from the experiences of a 50 year old guy who has been working in the same company for 20 years from the same guy and i think i left the central link because it was kind of far from me um like it was every day it was like one hour drive and i did it for like four or five months and then i gave up because i got another job which was closer to me and it was um better pay it, it was a better pay job and northern quest casino it's a huge casino i would say in the northwest let's just say it in the northwest is one of the biggest casinos and especially in spokane uh i started working there as a cyber tech again at the very bottom of the food chain no like you know nobody knows me but again um the only reason you're working there is because to gain all the knowledge and experience your supervisors are providing you you get to know how things works in usa you need references to you know move from one level to another um how you should present yourself in the meetings it's like small things but you know after your education when you are done you're going to find a job and all these things can reflect on your resume in a very good way and uh, uh, about the internship miss allen told you about um during the two years of education there are two classes which will just about internship and you will not graduate if you don't do it and in my case um i don't know you guys know it but i used to work from for global education office like during my uh edu- during my studies in usa in sfcc i used to work in the global education office not in scc but uh, there are other branches like in sfcc but it's interconnected so technically i was working for miss allen and loved it and that those like hours counted uh, in my internship my professor said okay you are around computers you are working for them and doing stuff on computers so it is okay we can count it as your internship hours and for those both class uh, for both uh, classes like you have to have at least 40 hours of um into inter- as an internship you have to do 40 hours so i did like a lot of hours for global education office so they counted my internship as that but you can find if you find internship outside school if you find internship uh, even in the sikh temples uh, or anywhere if you find computers and you work there or just helping them they can count as internship hours and they with the professors will count it you just have to do like couple forms and that's it and uh, yeah internship uh, is must you want to graduate, graduate if you don't do it so like you know when you come to spokane just don't be introvert try to go outside and you know be here and there just keep you know be on your professors that like, i want to find the internship in nonship and they will help you everybody over here just want you to be on the top of your game either way okay. so they will help you and, and a lot of the professors are connected in the community as you've discovered so they have places to help you go but uh, you know what resonates here with me too is that you you got out there and made it happen for yourself so you know you can talk to your students about opt and internships but they don't come to you you right. have to get yourself out there and you know out be there. prepared and you were doing your resumes and really make, you were actively searching and that's a big part of being successful so um exactly. and the internship you could have gotten an internship with IT somewhere but it was a perfect fit for global education you gained some different skills and yes, we yes, loved yes, having you as an ambassador good. yes yes mm-hmm. thanks Love for all that good. information uh, so it's Got really it. interesting to hear you oh it's poll time woohoo yeah great so quite an interesting part which uh, most of us uh, we love about it so here are the polls uh very simple questions and i'm sure many of you will be able to answer them correct so where is the community colleges of spokane located is it located in california washington state missouri or india <laughs> then the, <laughs> then the next question yeah, is what is the yeah. duration of associate degree one year is it two years three years or four years 
Then the next question is, when is community colleges of spoken next available intake? Is it January, February, March, or December 2020? I can see a lot of you are already answering, uh, and uh, many are answering it correct also. So uh, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Yeah, the way it is going on, it's, it's quite uh, good. So we'll wait for another 10 seconds so that you can just quickly answer the polls, and then we're going to end and share the results with you. So here are the results. So 62% of the people were correct that we are there in Washington state. So community colleges Spokane is located in Washington state. Yes, associate degree is for two years and we are avail available for our January 2021 intake. So if you have any applications, you can send it across. So thank you all for participating in the polls. Over to you, Trina. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So after OPT, you did your work for a year. And then before that, though, or maybe during OPT year, but before you graduated, you had to start think, be thinking about what, where, where are you going to go? What university are you going to transfer to? What's your plan? Um, I think that the, I laid out some questions when when did you start thinking about transferring? How did you plan and prepare? Um, so what are some things you learned that you wish you could do over? But the biggest thing is I, I, uh, the timeline. Is like you have to start thinking about it a year during, before. Yes, yes, yes. Even like I think you guys did an amazing job by putting up all the seminars from different, when different universities and different colleges all over from USA come to Spokane Falls Community College. They are just there and anybody can walk in into that room. I remember, I remember going to all of them. I think I went to three of them. And the every time I went there. to them, yeah. yeah, the transfer seminars. Uh, I think there are more than like 20 universities over there, 22, 30 universities. Everybody is there and just wanna ask just ready to answer your questions about all of everything you have and they're they're so amazing like you know you go in there and you are again so you know frightened about seeing different universities and the names you have seen in the you know somewhere in the block letters you have this university and oh, oh my god the representative of that university is right there let's just go and ask so many questions to him or her and that's what i did I think the, I made a decision to go, like initially I made a decision to go to GCU, Grand Canyon University. It's in Arizona. And, um, um, but every time I used to go there, I used to talk to the representative over the phone, on the emails. And even personally, we met like a couple of times. And it just keep, you know, you keep finding the information from all the different universities by going in there. And uh, you collect all the stuff and then you make a decision. For me, I think I applied to three, four different universities. I applied to GCU, I applied to Eastern Washington University, I applied to Gonzaga, and I applied to Whitworth in the end. And uh, I got accepted in all of the universities. And I think- I, like uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I applied to four universities. The reason I, um, the preparation to go to the universities is uh, it starts within you. Like, do you want to move from your city? Do you want to move from your state? And then you keep applying to different universities. And I think I had this conversation with my dad when I was applying to different universities from different states. Uh, he told me like um, for international students, that's my and my dad's opinion was that moving from one state to different state is again like moving from India to USA. Because you have to restart everything from zero. You have to make the connections. You have to make the... Uh, you know, you have to know the city, you have to know the state, then you have to make connections in the university, you have to, you know, know your neighborhood and everything. So that was the reason I decided to stay in Spokane. And um, again, nice decision. I love going to Whitworth. It's one of the nicest school in the Pacific Northwest, very reputed around, around the Spokane and all the other universities over here. And I think uh, the decision, I remember the night when I made a decision to go to Whitworth. I have this friend from Japan. Her name is Natsumi. She, she just graduated from the same university. 
and she used to go there and we were at a party and we were talking about you know what school you go to and what are you doing and all the other things and she told me that she's going to Whitworth and I, I was you know curious because I knew about the university through the transfer seminar and there she told me like you know she got some um, scholarships in the university and uh, now she is just you know being there and loving it and the next day I went to the campus I went to the international office over there and they told me about everything and again everybody is so helpful and so they just you know am amazed that you are there and they are so welcoming all the time and i when i went there uh, they told me about the scholarship so i got a couple scholarships um it's not easy to get scholarships and it's not for everyone but you have to be again on the top of your game to gain those scholarships and if you it's very expensive to be in a university in a private university like whitworth but i think a scholarship help at some point so um, i remember when uh, i got the scholarships like i was like you know i shouldn't go there should i should i not it's too expensive but once you got i got the call that yeah you've been approved and you will be getting this much money every semester i was like so happy because i was going to stay in spokane i was going to stay in washington and now i think from the place i'm staying right now the university is like 10 to 15 minutes drive right? that's it and i didn't change a lot of things in my schedule i didn't change a lot of stuff in my life to go to a university and pack everything and go to a different state no i just moved it from a different house to a different apartment that's it and i'm loving it since then it's uh, my next semester starts uh, in 5 days and we are excited about it it's uh, during the pandemic time but you know fingers are crossed and everybody is excited to go back to school after summer yes i love I hearing your it, story that's so good i love it yeah yeah it was amazing it was it wasn't like you know a uh, one one time thing that yeah i'm going to it what i applied to all these schools and i oh, you know yeah. i talked to natsumi you remember natsumi uh, the yeah. girl from japan yes yeah. yes yes Um, so she she was, she helped me a lot if there's one thing that you you know if you look back on the process the transfer planning and applying and and all of that whole thing what would you do over if you could do you do you have any reflection back of something that you learned like ah if i would have known i would have done it differently to be honest i think uh, okay i'm going to answer this in a very certain way so since i have moved from india i don't think i've made any bad decision anything to regret about anything i have you know i'm like oh dang it i should have done that in that way or nothing every every step you know you just i just talk to my dad and my cup and my sisters that's it and we you know we talk and we discuss it and we do it and that's how it is but i think you know, i i could have gone to gcu because now i think it's it's been too many years in spokane and i had a i had a chance to you know go out during that time and start my education in a different state in a different city over there but again like i said i love being here and uh, by being here i have saved a lot of money to myself and to my dad because even it was a cheaper university gcu is like cheaper than whitworth but still it was like too much money i was throwing in to move there and to find a house to live there and roommates and you know everybody so in the end we decided to stay in spokane and we are happy about it and we love the weather here no one I don't want to go out from Spokane yeah 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 exactly. all right good deal well so now we've taken us on your journey you are in yeah, five days university. starting your second semester second semester second semester oh, it's a kind, kind of sem second semester but i did the for uh, spring semester and then i did the summer term So I did okay. uh, took a couple so classes you, in the summer so technically second summer. semester yeah you're ready yes. to go so you're in yes, your second ish second third um semester at semester. Whitworth University which as Abilash said is a private university a very prestigious private university here in Spokane um and you're majoring in computer science with a minor in information technology and business yeah yes, So you have ahead of you about a year and a half ish if you do the summer course yes. or yes, session yes, yes, so yes, yes. yes if i do the jan term to I'll, i'll complete it in one year yeah 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 so um 
Whitworth is doing similar to um, Community College of Spokane by offering different modalities of study, like a flex program where students have the option of taking online hybrid, which is a mix of online and on and campus offline classes. classes. Yes. Yeah. So you get a chance to get that experience even during, co in the, during the COVID time, campus experience. And then still be, you know, feel feel like you're safe and, you know, have some distance. Yeah. So, um, as a student, as a as a university student, what you know, talk a little bit about your goals Very after you graduate. What you you know, master's degree? Are you going to do another OPT? Have you thought about it? Uh, yes. After I think I will graduate in another year, and that's the plan right now. And I'm excited about having all the university experience because I haven't got any yet. I started yeah. my university by the end of January 2020. And after like a couple of weeks, uh, I think it was like three weeks after they did a lockdown and everything was shut down and then online study started. But again, we are back in the school. Uh, Whitworth has launched the Whitworth Flex model. And it's amazing. According right now, all the professors has already been, you know, texting you and emailing you about all the stuff you need to do before you come to the class. And yeah, we are ready and I'm ready to gain my share of university experience. And uh, I think uh, um, the goals and everything I have set up in my mind already, like what I want to achieve from the university and the goals, uh, and the objectives is to, you know, be out there, out there and find a job and do the OPT. I think after graduating from Whitworth, from my bachelor's, I will be having three years of OPT, one year of OPT, and then we can renew it and have two more years. And in those three years, I think, you know, you can have a blast in your job. My, okay, it's a secret, but I'm putting out there to 48 people and all of you guys, that I went to Seattle six months ago, six, seven months ago. And while I was there, I saw the biggest Boeing factory. You, if you guys, you know, you have traveled in any of the planes, big planes, you know what the Boeing is. And while as I was there, I did a tour of the factory and I did a tour of all their inside places. And I, right there, I made a decision that I graduate, I'm gonna work for Boeing in any of their department related to computer science or information technology. So that's the goal right now. In my mind, I just want to graduate in one and a half year or one year and I want to apply to Boeing and I want to get accepted and uh, I want to work for them for a while, not for a long, you know. In the end, I want to start my new, my thing, my startup business, something like that. But I want to go there and work and now want to know how things go in that kind of universe where they make those big planes where we can sit and go from USA to India, just like that. So yeah, that's yeah, the plan. Wow, Boeing, yes. that's a big goal, yes, that's man. a big goal. It's a, you know, like um, in Whitworth, the placement rates are very high, especially yes, for the yeah. major I have. If you know the stuff, people will hire you no matter what. And uh, with the day, this pandemic going on, I think the computer is next new, you know, new normal for everyone. Everyone is working from home, even you guys and all the different departments. And uh, if you need computers, you need computer scientists for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And here is one of them, future computer scientists. There you are. Yeah. I, love, I love that. The Boeing is a great, is a great goal. And I, yeah, I'm going to hold you to that. It's right, it's yes, right yes, in your yes. backyard, which is one of the great things. Amazon, <laughs> Boeing, exactly. all of those mm -hmm. different companies. Yes, yes, wow. yes. Good. Well, yeah, I have wow. this is the end of his presentation. Wow. Thank you so much I, for your information. Um, yes. We could talk more. Remember this. Mm -hmm. You do, yes. Uh, it looks so yes. fun. It was, it was, it was this, this year, it was this year's holy. We did it. Uh, this was, I think it was from Whitworth. It was, uh, everybody was there. All these are mostly international students from India and from Nepal and from other part of South Asia. And uh, it was done by the Indian community here in USA. It was amazing, lovely. So, so you know, you, when you are here all the way from India, you see these pictures, all the Indian friends are posting about Oli. Uh, but you are here, you're not doing nothing, but then, you know, you post something like this and they're like, oh, dang it, you celebrating too. <laughs> so it's amazing. 
Yeah. It was I love it. Being there. I love it. Well, Priyanka, do we have any questions? We're really happy to talk more about certain things, answer questions. Definitely, Trinan. Thank you, Abhilash. It was like quite uh, informative and uh, it was like full of fun. We are in uh, our agents actually got to know the uh, actual scenario, what happens out there and same can be passed on to the prospective students. So thank you for that and thank you, Trina. So uh, um, if you have questions, then uh, you can type it in the q and tab and I'll be taking uh, questions one-on-one -on -one and we'll be uh, passing it on to uh, Trina and Abhilash to uh, let you know about uh, more about uh, community colleges spoken. So I think uh, many of the people have got very... Uh, uh, inspired by Abhilash and questions are coming about information technology program. So here is the first question is information technology program, a STEM based program. Yes. Should be. Yes. Should. Yeah. yeah. It is STEM based program. STEM based program for, uh, I hope, and I think everybody knows it, but it's a science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So if you're choosing a program in those fields, it, you are in the STEM major. So yeah, I think uh, people should go it. It's a broad stream, broad stream of science covers a lot of science programs. Uh, technology covers a lot of technology program, engineering and math. So yeah, everything is covered in those mostly. Mm, great. Uh, another question is about, especially considering the COVID-19 situation and uh, people are not preferring to go out. So is Duolingo test is accepted for students application and how much score is required for Duolingo? Yes, we do accept Duolingo happily. Um, we are a longtime partner of Duolingo. We look for 85 or higher for direct academic admission. Great. Um, and the next question is, what are the entry requirements for any of the program of associate degree? So what are the entry requirements? Yes, thank you for asking that. Um, our admissions process is really easy compared to a lot of different universities. Uh, we just require our online application, which is easy to find and easy to, to apply for. We require a passport copy, high school completion, or if you're interested in our high school completion program, we need ninth and 10th grade transcripts. And um, financials, which is um, financial support showing 18,000 USD or more. And that's it. We don't require an essay. We don't require any letter of recommendations. <laughs> if you have those things, we would happily take them. But um, once you send in a complete application with those, with those documents, along with an IELTS, a TOEFL, or a Duolingo, or PTE, we can wrap up the admissions and get your I-20 sent to you within 48 hours. Great. Thank you, Trina, for that. Uh, I request everybody, please type in your question in the Q&A tab. Chat box is uh, if you're facing any technical concern. Though uh, the question I'll be taking up, which has come in the chat box is about the fee structure. What is the average cost of one year uh, um, when they're gonna do uh, their associate degree? Mm -hmm. Our tuition is just around 10,000 USD per year. And that includes all of campus fees. There's different fees that are embedded for student, students and library fees and things. Um, and it also, that, in, that amount also includes an international student health insurance. Oh, great, fantastic. Um, though our uh, fees is already quite uh, economical, however, uh, there is a question which has come up is about scholarships. So if you can just address on that. Sure, sure, happy to. So at Community Colleges of Spokane, we have a scholarship system that's annual. So a student, uh, our scholarship portal opens in October and closes in January. So that student has a few months to essentially shop around for different scholarships in the portal. You have to read through the different scholarships that are available, pick the ones that are appropriate for you. There are scholarships that are program-based, that are um, male, female, that are need-based, merit-based, all kinds of different scholarships. There's over 100 to choose from. And you um, have your own account that you create your application and then you can edit your application according to the different scholarships. Once the scholarship portal 
uh, closes in January, um, scholarship awards are given out that next May. So essentially the scholarship timeline is October through May each year. So there you would, a student would have two years to apply for uh, those different scholarships. Throughout the year, we also hear of um, outside scholarships. These, the scholarships I just told you about are CCS scholarships, but we always hear about extraneous scholarships and we're always updating the students by email and making sure that they hear about the latest opportunity to apply. Great, uh, thank you for giving And I'll add one more thing, I'm yeah. sorry Priyanka. Um, I, and in, like in Abilash's transfer planning, um, many, many, many universities offer transfer scholarships to students who are international transfer pathway students. So there's a lot of opportunities to layer those scholarships on to as, as you're, you know, as you are a transfer student. They look for those transfer students because they know that they're prepared and um, have established GPA and are ready to work hard. Absolutely. Exactly, and, they, exactly. yeah. and they do understand the uh, US education system because coming in from a different education system altogether. Yes. Um, right, right. Now, uh, considering the current COVID-19 situation and the pandemic and all, as you know, that visa issues have been a great deal and the news which kept on coming in. So what is your say on that? Like, uh, uh, do you think that now things are going to improve because embassy in India has also started giving visa appointments? So what is your say on that? All I can say is I hope that that things will be more positive and different. I, uh, we really, be, just because the embassies are reopening now all over the world in different regions, no one really knows what to expect. Um, and we know that there's gonna be a big rush. So um, I, I want to continue to encourage everyone to prepare their students just like you usually you would. Um, there isn't going to be any, any looser considerations or any you know, open gates, like just go ahead and go, N none of that. We really have to still be focused on quality students, students who understand their plan. Students can speak clearly about their academic goals. Um, it's the same as it, it, it always has been and probably a, little, probably a little bit more difficult, I would say, but we're, we're ready. Schools are ready um, mm -hmm. to support mm -hmm. that. So another question which has come is about how can we apply, the most important question here, how can we apply for uh, community colleges of Spokane? Well, I'll jump in and then Priyanka, you can also fill in too. Um, we're, we're right now, right now taking applications for winter session. Winter session starts January 5th, I believe. And literally that is just around the corner when we're talking about planning and pre-departure. So if you're interested, we're, you know, we have quick turnaround, but don't wait. Let's have time on your side so students have the opportunity to prepare, sit for their mock interviews, practice, and then, you know, visit the embassy to try to get their F1. Um, we have a lot of students right now who are enrolled online from their home country, planning to travel to Spokane to continue their studies for the Jan session. So it's a perfect time for your students to plan to travel. Hopefully things will stay um, on the up and up, but yes, it's, it's now is the time to apply for Jan or even spring in April. Great, uh, thank you for that. And uh, the process for application is very simple. We have an online application process. Mm -hmm. So you can fill in the application online and then uh, you will receive an email to submit all the documents. Uh, the moment you will submit the documents, we are going to uh, start with the process of uh, I-20. And the best part is that uh, here in, uh, we have also waived off the I-20 for you, uh, waived off the application fee for you. So there is no application fee, which is to be paid. And since uh, these days, electronic I-20s are accepted. So uh, I-20 will be shipped, uh, will be sent across to the student's email ID. And if you need the hard copies of I-20, then yes, there would be shipment charges, which would be on the basis of the freight uh, which you're going to choose. So approximately 60 to $70 is what you can assume as a shipment charges of I-20. Though right now, electronic I-20s are accepted, so which is a great thing. So you can start applying ASAP. Now, another question is, again, about applications, that what is the last date of applications? 
Last date for jam session is November. I have to look at my calendar. End of November. It's, yeah, yeah, um, it is because we close. Um, um, we're a little bit flexible also, so we close somewhere around one and a half months prior to the session start date. So end of November is what you can assume as a. Uh, um, uh, as the, yes. November 27, yes. yeah. Great, yeah. great. So that's the exact date that you can uh, submit the applications. Now, uh, what is the turnaround time to, uh, to uh, get the I-20? Once we get a complete application, we can offer the admission and get the I-20 ready for either shipment or send electronically within two, two business days. Great, thank you for that. I think. Uh, uh, we need to uh, uh, explain maybe a little bit more on scholarships because the question which has come is, if the student is applying for January 2021 intake, is he or she can get scholarship? Like, is he eligible for scholarship first from the beginning? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and, I, and I don't want to get too detailed and confusing, but once a student gets a student ID number, which they will get, at the time of their acceptance letter and I-20. So before they even arrive, they will get their own student ID number. Once they get that, then they are able to enter that portal and start shopping for scholarships. So that means the sooner you get your application in October, November, uh, and get that student ID to that student can begin the process before it closes in January. So they would, you know, it would be a little tight, but it's definitely possible. Once students have a student ID, they're considered a current student. So they would be eligible to apply. Yep, good question. Great, fantastic. So, so, you, so sooner you're gonna apply, uh, you will be able to take benefit of these scholarships which are available. So another uh, question is about GPA requirement. So what is the GPA requirement to get an admission uh, with the CCS? Sure. So we, we don't look for a GPA threshold. Um, the community colleges have always been founded on the concept of allowing uh, higher education for everyone in the community no matter of your current ed education level or your financial status. So it's an open admission, we call that. Um, and we still, even to this day, it was founded in the 1960s, but still to this day, it's that same open door policy. And so we don't scrutinize the grades. However, for scholarships and for certain programs, you have to maintain a, GP, a higher GPA in order to be successful and continue into those programs. Um, but for admission purposes, we do not. We do offer a high school completion program. So students can actually finish their high school at the same time they're doing their associate degree. For that program, we do want a GPA of 3.0 or higher. But other programs, general admission, we do not. I, I just want to add on this, uh, like on the GPA thing, uh, like none, nobody out there should uh, misunderstood by, you know, if you, if some, if the colleges are accepting the lower grades also, and then you can apply for this and you can come here and do the same thing, you know, you were doing back in India too. So you got those lower grades. When you come here, there's a lot of competition in the class. There's a lot of competition with within like, you know, within the center, you're just sitting there, two, three people are sitting beside you. There's a lot of competition in the group itself. And to, you know, and everybody out there is expecting you're from India, you are the tech people out there. So you know everything, you are the master. So, you know, to, <laughs> yeah, to have those standards high, you need to be on the top of the game. So don't, you know, don't misunderstand while when we say, uh, the grades uh, we don't think about the grades but when you come here you have to put all your 100 percent or more to you know be there and to be the center of attraction so very true thank you absolutely and great thing to know that they uh, do value being a stecky uh, coming in from india so. <laughs> that can so. add. Yes, absolutely. So it actually uh, makes, uh, making me feel good also about it. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, so we'll quickly take the last question here. Um, and uh, that is, uh, 
again considering covid-19 situation um, so it's like question is like during this covid-19 situation is it possible to get visa or only online classes and also if tonight you can just like uh, share details on how we are going to help the students for interview preparations mm -hmm. sure sure so for covid-19 again you know we're all kind of venturing into new territory and and uh, things change so rapidly and we saw over these past few months how USCIS was and CVIP was rapidly changing their regulations so um, it is a bit of an unknown, but we, but the, the embassies are opening and in certain regions of the world, the embassies are giving preference to student visas. So there, there is um, movement to opening the borders and getting, getting movement again to, for travel. And I've also heard that some, some restrictions are lifted about the 14 day quarantine as well in many regions. So this is positive. Um, we have to just continue through that process as per usual. And uh, what Priyanka is referring to is I'm, I'm especially interested in meeting your students on Zoom, on Skype, whatever, to do mock interview sessions and to really, you know, dig deep into their knowledge and understanding of what they are going to do. It's a crucial that they meet somebody besides you who they know and you know can blow off or whatever. Somebody, uh, you know, a person that they've not met before, I'm from the school, I have particular things to share. And I think that, that just that variety of practice is very helpful to give different talking points and just to polish their effort. So I, and a lot of our partners out there are excellent at this already. I'm, I'm not saying that you're not, but let's give that extra layer. Please, please know that I'm available to do the mock interviews anytime. I love to book my calendar with those. It's very important. Great, and thank you for that support. Actually, students, uh, they do feel very confident after taking a session from you, Trina. So, oh, good. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and actually, now facing uh, a foreigner, because ultimately in embassy also, most of the people, those who are sitting, they are from US, majority of them. So it actually gives them the confidence. They're able to understand the accent and all. So, it is right. actually very helpful. We have an so, accent? Uh, we, we have a different accent. <laughs> like, I'm just saying the different accent which we have. Yes. So yes. It, it, it is actually sometimes gets difficult to understand uh, uh, a different accent, though we are talking the same language. But yes, it, it makes True. a difference. Yeah. I always just feel like we have no accent, but I know we do. I know. Same. I would say I also have got a different accent here. Same as with everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So thank you, Trina. Thank you, Vilash, for taking out your time. It was a wonderful session and, and, and full of fun. So not just informative, I would say it was full of fun with the, so much of awareness, what exactly happens in the actual student life when they uh, reach there about their studies and the information which is shared by Vilash. That was like uh, fantastic. So thank you for that. Uh, and awesome, um, awesome. That's, that's welcome. Yes. yeah, and in the end, uh, uh, Trina and Abhilash, if you want to add on something and say something to the people, those who are listening to us right now. Go ahead, Abhilash. Any last words? Yeah. Yes, I just want to, you know, say to everyone out there, if there are any students or you, just be confident about yourself when you come here or go for the visa interviews. And I know it's high time. It's difficult times. Uh, none of us have. None of us, yeah, our generation has never, or a lot of generations have never seen like this, this kind of situation there. But, uh, you know, this is a time to be out there and, you know, we still got to think about our futures. We got, still got to, we still have to live our lives in the end. So mm -hmm. just do all the precautions, take all the precautions and uh, be out there. And yeah, we would love to have you here. Uh, I, I, even I'm not a part of the school, any, I'm still part of the school anymore. I'm still it's part of the hard. school as an alumni, yeah. But uh, <laughs> I, I still know a lot of international students, especially coming from India. I always, whenever I talk to Miss Ellen or uh, Priyanka, ma'am, I ask, uh, are there any new students coming in? And uh, I love to talk to them all the time. Yeah, so yeah, just in the end, you know, be, be confident about everything you're doing in your life. Awesome. Yes, and I just want to thank everybody again for being here and, and always so much to talk about and share. And so um, I appreciate your time. And I am here on the other end of this computer screen anytime for questions or comments or just another info session.
Thank you all very much. Awesome. Yeah. Priyanka, thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Most welcome. Thank you, Avilash. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. If you want to know more about uh, our e-summits, which we keep on uh, organizing on a regular basis, yeah, you can check our website, which is www.mskmedia.com. And also, if you want to see the uh, webinars, which have already taken place, you want to check out later on, you can check that on our YouTube page, which is mskmedia.com. So, Thank you all. Thank you for your time. Be Thank safe you. and take care of yourself. Bye. Yeah. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.